cannabis has um, made some really incredible advancements industrially. Back in the 30s, Popular Mechanics put out an article, as you well know, that illustrated over 25,000 different uses for it. Since that's been published, we've seen cars such as the Echo Elise by Lotus, which the whole car was made out of hemp. You have European automotive manufacturers using hemp. You have BMW, you have Mercedes, you have Bugatti. Audi, Jaguar, and there's a scooter of hemp fiber from us. When I was a kid with long hair, I hated these guys with a big BMW and a big Mercedes because I was a you know, left, left guy. And, and now I see this big gun and hey, my hemp inside. It's coming out to the mainstream that, hey, we can make money on this. It has apparently engaged incredible amounts of human ingenuity. And so one of the great unsung agricultural revolutions is apparently going on right under our nose. We're starting to see hemp plastics, beauty products, insulation, hempcrete, special food, packaging, bio charcoal that has a negative carbon footprint and actually can work the same way we use coal. If you go to a fair now concerning cannabis, and I was the last one here in Spain, it's like <laughs> there's a whole industry behind it now. The nutrition element of hemp is becoming so well known, it's becoming very fashionable to eat and to use it in cosmetics. We are starting to see fabrics derived from the cellulose, which was not common before. If you recognize that two-thirds of the insecticide and pesticides uh, is being used in the world for cotton, on the same acre of, of cotton you can grow hemp and you have more fiber and no insecticides, no pesticides, and it takes much less water. America is the only industrialized nation that prohibits its farmers from growing hemp, as far as I know. The DEA um, is lobbying to prevent hemp. They argue that they can't tell the difference between hemp and the female plant. You're gonna smoke your skateboard? You know, you're gonna smoke your chair? You can smoke your, your shirt and, and get as much of a jolt as you can by, by smoking hemp. I mean, there's just nothing there. Why does the federal government care? They want to keep people from thinking anything non-negative about marijuana. It's interesting that the gentleman who wrote the book, The Emperor Wears No Clothes, his name was Jack Herrer. He was given a 1942 tape titled Hemp for Victory, and he passed it along to a Wall Street Journal reporter. The Wall Street Journal reporter contacted the Library of Congress and said, I need an entry for this because I'm going to reference it. They came back and said, there is no reference for it. We never made that. We don't know anything about that tape. That caused the reporter to call Jack and say, hey, you're hustling me. This isn't really made by the United States government. This isn't the US Department of Agriculture, and you probably made it. You're lying. So it caused Jack to go all the way to Washington, DC, and to go to the Library of Congress, and to go in there and try to find it himself. He went through all the microfish, couldn't find it. He went outside to go smoke and thought to himself, what would happen if I came in 1942? There wouldn't have been microfish. So he walked back inside, and he said, excuse me, what did you have in 1942 to reference these films? And they said, well, we had these books. And he said, do you still have them? And they said, yes. And he said, well, could you bring me to them? And in them, he found two references to the U.S. Department of Agriculture's 1942 Hemp for Victory tape, which was black and white in 14 minutes and clearly made by the United States government because somehow when they were recording our history, they managed to miss putting in this Hemp for Victory tape into, oh, the National Archives and just exempted it from our history.